Engineer 775 on a new job. We got jobs lined up for the whole year, so we're very thankful for that. And we're in a uh, undisclosed location in West Virginia today. It's nice and cool. And uh, it is a roof job, not doing a ground mount, so a little different. Got the crew starting on the roof, getting the pollen, and uh, it's drying off. But anyway, just want to talk to you a little bit about uh, this system. It's going to be a 30 panel, 30 Solark panel, about a 10K with uh, Solark 12K arc batteries. And I just wanted to show you some of the features. If you're thinking of doing this yourself as a DIY project, and uh, just a couple tips maybe that will help you. This is a remodeling job. And so we asked the customer to go ahead. And this is one of the big moves that we have people do if they're starting new construction. Uh, and I'll show you that here. So we have done another job for this customer and this is gonna be another one of his houses. So we're, uh, he was used to what we did. He already has a Solark, so he knew what we were looking for. We were looking for a main panel and a critical loads panel. And it doesn't take the electrician any more energy or time or money really to wire up two panels at the same time, putting the critical loads in the panel um, here and then the main heavy loads in this panel on the, on the left. They have some new cool split bus bar panels that are bigger than a single panel, but I think Schneider makes one of those that has uh, the top is a main and the bottom is the critical or generator panel. Um, but this is how we traditionally do it. And I even ran and put a nice wiring trough to separate things so we can go back and forth. And then we're gonna take and mount our 10 inch wiring trough over here, connect to this critical loads panel and then probably use, yeah, we'll use, take advantage of that. Solark's gonna go here. We got arc batteries on the floor and haven't decided if we're gonna use the rack yet. But anyway, when you're doing a new, new construction or a remodel job, um, this is what we try to encourage people to do. Go ahead and think about solar or generator or what have you. Um, if you don't put up enough inverter to run the whole house, which you can do now with a, with a solar arc, you can stack two, three, up to nine inverters and go completely off the grid. But for most people, a single inverter gives a lot of peace of mind and a lot of, a, a lot of capability. So um, you have 37 and a half amps continuous, you can do a lot. All right, so the guys are starting on the roof. We're going to put not, uh, 10 panels on the roof of this house because we couldn't fit them all in a barn. I'll show you that. It's a standing seam roof. And Abe's already up on it. So they're hooking in their uh, D-rings and anchor points inside. the. Uh, they're going through the ridge cap and anchoring themselves off. We also have another rope tied to an excavator bucket on the other side of the roof. So we're gonna be putting two rows of 10 panels on this roof. We're using the ACE clamps, the A2Ns. So no penetrations there within the envelope. And then you can't really see this. There's a hip roof up here. We're gonna put 10 more panels on, on that side. So, and, uh, so they're getting started with the roof and I'm gonna be a ground man today. Almost lunchtime, day one. Got the rails mounted for 20 panels, two, two uh, series of 10. Got our boot, booted roof penetration here. And we're gonna put our DC disconnect here and we transition, there's a three inch conduit. It should be a very easy pull to the house. And uh, we just offset everything off the wall because they're going to put brick on this building. So uh, we've got a LB with a cord, glanded cord grip to bring the solar into that. PB wire into that. We'll actually pull the PB wire all the way down and make our connection in the IMO. And then we'll transition to 10 THHN. It's a short run to the house. So hopefully we'll get all these rails leveled out, planed out by time for lunch. Johnny's finishing up the boot and we'll be good. Okay, the last panel's going down on this roof and two strings of 10. Got it landed down here in the IMO. Got it booted. Hopefully it's clear. 
All right. Let's see what we get for voltage on that. And then we'll transition over to the hip roof on the south facing roof of the house and put another 10 panels. Finding soul arts in the interest, most interesting places. We're in uh, West Virginia and the system was not producing what the customer had hoped it would. And uh, so we just went in and basically it hadn't been turned on. So, and the customer couldn't get a hold of the installer from what I'm gathering. We're just double checking a few things. They've got 48 panels on this thing. So I'm worried about the VOC violation on the string. Johnny's checking. What, what are they? They're not shot for me. That's good. Any identification? Trying to figure out what these panels are because the you don't you want to do springs of 12 on a 60 cell you're going to be over. Like, uh, Everest. Yeah, Everest looks like Everest rails. Anyway, we're doing a little investigation after work. Not really trying to drum up any more work, but we ju it just sort of shows up. All right, we're day two here. We pretty much finished that solar array over there. Two strings of ten. We're now, uh, hip roofs are always fun. And uh, trying to get 10 in this facet is causing some aggravation. So we're probably gonna end up putting nine, six on the bottom, three on top. And we're going into a different MPPT channel, so that's not an issue. And we could always add more solar on the west side in the future. So just, just we're gonna do six and three, I think. All right, I think we'll beat the rain on this job, hopefully. We're transitioning using PDBs from stripped out MC cable and uh, making that transition there from our solar wires coming from our roof through a three inch conduit and then going up with MC, taking MC through the basement and then up to the inverter gutter. So I'm just bringing that up into the solar arc. So, fairly straightforward. This THHN transition to MC cable. And we'll have this just little pull box, get that cover on there, and we'll be good. So, we're going to beat the rain. We're into the third day. That's really two and a half days, and we're about to fire the Solark 12K up. Gents are getting the batteries in position. We went with three arcs on the rack this time. It's a little welded fabricated rack from arc batteries and uh, i think we've got we're going through checking voltages on everything we've got our cts in we are using our bypass you can see it's we always go solar up grid down just to keep it straight using our power distribution blocks to split bringing grid in from the outside meter base to the power distribution block and then we distribute it to the inverter and also up to this bypass, which is an inverter. All right, we're about to fire, fire this up. Got our ferrite cores for noise canceling on their DC battery home runs. And out here, and Antonio's just tightening things up. This uh, power company required us to put in a production meter a disconnect between it. They sent me the one-line diagram, and we just did what they said. And thank thankfully, we did. We would have had to do a line side tap in the meter can, but this fortunately had two breaker locations, so we we're able to put a 60 amp, and that's our bi-directional grid feed for the system. We're going to do some testing here, both in limited power to load, limited power to home, and grid cell. And I think we're good. Solar's landed. We've got batteries on the left. CTs. That connection there is for these CTs. And those CTs have an arrow on them. They have to be facing the utility in order to be used correctly. They go in connections three through six. Positive and negative on our arrays. We're using two MPPTs. And I think that's about it. I got to do a software update. The dongle's on the side on the 12K as the PV disconnect is. And we will um, 
do a little Wi-Fi. I got an auto loader I ordered from Solar to uh, allow me to keep the latest software version before I go to a job. And it just saves some time because, for example, on this job there's no internet and that makes things a little difficult. So I bring my router, bring my Verizon router with me so I can establish some internet here and uh, get this thing connected to PowerView or PV Pro. So we're about to do some testing or we're about to eat. Testing then lunch. Yeah, let's, let's turn the solar on. Get it. Turn everything on. Oh yeah, and we also got some cool, this kind of gives away where we are. Some awesome anthracite coal. Guys are gonna do some forge and play with, but uh, while we were here, we grabbed some coal. The customer got the coal for everybody. That was very nice of them. All right, day three wrap up. We're getting ready to put our covers on. Everything's tested out, working good. They actually lost power here while we were eating lunch, so we're off grid. That was pretty awesome. A big explosion, freaked me out. I thought it was the Solar. How dare I think that? But anyway, we're up and running. Just doing some, we did a software update uh, just recently, and we've tested everything, tested our bypass, tested some loads, been running a heat gun. This is a remodel, so not everything is wired in. That's why you have a mess up here. That's not us, that's the electrician here uh, wiring this house and this remodel. So we've got three arc batteries on a uh, modular rack with casters, and that was pretty cool. We've got the, everything's bust in the back. You have the same connectors. You, there's twice as many uh, combiner connectors, terminals in the back, and so everything is is combined there. Our home runs are in, of course. Everything's working. Uh, the usual power distribution blocks and come some of the tricks of the trade that are very helpful. Uh, we got solar coming from another building through here. We got solar coming from this roof above me here, running up and over. And, uh, and then our grid tie-in. We uh, found out last minute, but it was great that we did in time. They wanted a production meter two years ago when we were here. They didn't require them. This one they did. So we got a reproduction meter, an AC disconnect, and we have a 60 amp breaker in here. Bringing that up, that's our bi-directional grid feed. Um, fortunately, we were also able to use this uh, jumper that the customer got from a neighbor who works for the power company here. So we're able to test the grid side of things. We also, we always add the CTs, the current transformers to our systems, uh, just in case, you know, the utility changes their rules and it's not favorable to export for whatever reason. And then they can use those CTs just to offset their power usage. So we're wrapped up. We're just going to clean up, throw some labels on and uh, head to another. we got some referrals while we were here and people coming out of the woodworks to come see if we can put solar on their house. So we have, uh, I think, seven or eight buildings to look at while we're here. Oh, don't tell the guys because it's like five hours from home. Um, anyway, <laughs> oh, he heard me. There he is. So uh, I guess that's it. We're wrapping up. And if you need any help getting a system, uh, whether it's us installing it for you or you wanting to tackle it on your own, definitely getting easier to install these systems so just let me know be happy to get you everything you need equipment batteries solarks uh, even the disconnects power distribution blocks solar panels ground mounts roof mounts you name it and we of course we also focus on the systems approach to solar it's it's more than solar for me it's the house hot water a hot shower well pumps air conditioners um, it's the works. Though this has become the hub for everything, it's not the only thing. All right, this is Engineer 775 signing out.